Hello, and welcome to the virtual overview of our training workshop entitled Planning for Job Search Success. My name is Dave Lawson. I've been with the Employment Services Group for about nine years, and my most recent career path has been with human resources in training and development roles. This is part one of a two-part module, and my co-facilitator is Betsy Kamizik, who will be taking you through part two. So let's get started with part one. You're probably familiar with the Alice in Wonderland story. After Alice fell down the rabbit hole and wandered for a while, she encountered the grinning Cheshire cat up in a tree. Alice asked the cat, how will I get to where I'm going? And the cat asked her, where do you want to go? And Alice answered, I, I really don't know. Then the cat responded smugly, well, if you don't know where you're going, then any road will get you there. Well, that's how it is with a lot of job seekers and career changers, and we see it a lot in employment services. What's often lacking is purpose, direction, and preparation. This training will help you with that. These are the learning objectives for this particular module. You'll come away with an understanding of how to plan effectively for your job search or career transition, begin to strategize for action, and also share what you've learned with others who may be in the same situation as you are. So where are you right now on this journey? Are you confident of your career choice and are looking for a new job in that same path, whether that's the building trades or marketing, healthcare, engineering, pharmaceuticals, retail, or whatever, you know that you're going in the right direction. Or maybe you're sensing that your present career path is wrong for you and it needs to change. Or have you just finished school? You're just starting out or maybe only gathering information for later. So wherever you are in this mix, you're in the right place right now. We're here to help. These are the critical steps in preparing yourself for success. Most job and career seekers begin with the mechanics of job search before laying the foundation. That's taking things out of order. Let's look at the three red portions on this diagram. Step one, the one right in the dead center is upward. Uh, that's hearing and following God's calling and his leadings. We believe that this is central to your planning. Step two, right above that, is attitude, uh, where you get your head in the right place with a healthy perspective. And step three is aptitude, where you discover your best qualities, how you're wired. The other steps include the mechanics that most of us leap into too soon. Uh, step four, uh, shown in blue, is altitude, where you begin to create your resume, develop your profile, learn interviewing and networking. Steps five, six, and seven are searching, sorting, and selecting. And there you're seeking prospective employers, you're interviewing and evaluating, and ultimately agreeing on an offer. Well, this particular module is all about effective planning. Those are the red portions of this diagram. Our other virtual modules or in-person workshops will guide you uh, into those very important mechanics. This is not a Bible study, but this part is important. So bear with me for just a moment. Step one on the previous slide was what we called upward or the fact of God's calling for your total life. And that includes our careers. We're displaying three different translations of a Bible verse, Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. But I like the last one the best and that's from the NLT version. You are God's masterpiece. He, craft, he crafted each of us on purpose and for a purpose. He made us for good works. This holds for every area of our lives, including occupations. And everyone who accepts this can be assured that the Lord has planned life and work opportunities for us to discover and not just stumble upon. The key, according to the Bible, is first to trust him. Okay, back to the training. Career and job transitions can truly be an emotional roller coaster. Well, this is all about step two in the earlier diagram, our attitude or getting our heads in the right place. Your departure from your previous job or your career may have resulted in anger or despair, self-doubt, and fear. 
we can even deny that the job separation was partly our own fault, even when we have to admit that we contributed to the problem. All of these emotions can be very destructive if you dwell on them. Here's the most important thing about attitude. Stop the negative self-talk and become productive. A way to move ahead productively is to learn from the past. Here are some things to ask ourselves. Look over the points on this slide. Things we need to ask ourselves. I'd like to offer you an example from my own experience. Um, the point two on this slide says, what could I have done to make things better? Well, there was a point in my career when I was assigned to a new manager who just joined the organization after I had been entrenched there for several years. And this person was very difficult, very uh, almost rude and uh, very, just a, just a very annoying type person. And I began to uh, back away more and more from the daily ongoing interactions with that manager. Well, as you might guess, that probably didn't contribute very well to a healthy job environment. And um, that's exactly what happened. That, that job eventually went away. Well, point three and four actually deal with things learning uh, on our, in our job experiences that went extremely well. So in the course of my various stops in employment, one thing that I've discovered that I enjoy doing very much is uh, taking employees through assessments of various kinds and uh, then uh, debriefing on the results of those assessments and then coaching them how to uh, change themselves in order to render better improvements on the job. So I took that forward in everything that I did and I'm using it right now. So my honest answers to these questions help me to move forward much quicker. How about trying them yourself? Here's a wonderful example on this slide of positive mental attitude. Uh, <clears throat> this slide is the same format that was sent to me on LinkedIn from someone who has been a guest for our employment services. Let's look at diff a different take on the words fail, end, and no. Uh, these are negative terms, huh? But not the way she saw it. So take a look at the slide. If you fail, never give up because F-A-I-L as an acronym means first attempt in learning. And we're gonna be talking about those first attempts uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, end is not the end, she writes. In fact, end, E-N-D, as an acronym, can mean effort never dies. And if you get no, particularly on, a, on an application or maybe on an interview, um, if you get no as an answer, remember that no should mean for you next opportunity, move ahead. So uh, these are uh, wonderful examples of how one person turned some negative concepts into very positive um, thinking. Kintsugi is an ancient Japanese art form that allows broken pottery to be reconnected using a resin and a gold composite. And many believe that the renewed product is even more beautiful than the original. It's not only different, it's more valuable than it was before. Well, this is an excellent metaphor for the person who feels damaged in the loss of their employment. In a sense, they may feel broken. That may be you, but you and they are far from destroyed. And I want you to know something that is very, very important. Employment services, our ministry, is all about providing skills for your job or your career search, but we're also all about providing hope and encouragement for your renewal. Here are five factors when all put together form your unique design and all are very important in your job search. The better you understand each of these five elements, the better you can see how to maximize your career. Um, those five factors in your unique design are your experiences, your abilities, your personality, your interests, and also your values. Let's look at them a bit closer. The five factors actually cluster into two large buckets. Uh, strengths are the combination of experiences, abilities, and personalities. Uh, these are all observable qualities and usually described as what you have to give. Sometimes they're even measurable. Your passions are the combination of your interests and your values. These qualities are what really drives you and they are internal. 
they are not as apparent to others and may not even be top of mind in your own job search. Well, many of us understand that matching our strengths to the job, that's the top three factors there, are, um, are very important, but they miss the importance of interest in values that form our passions. And ignoring these can result in a very bad fit and low personal satisfaction. So I want to give you an example of a friend of mine who learned this very, very well. My friend's name is Mike, and he began his work life as a civil engineer. And he was doing quite well in the day-to-day -day responsibilities with his, his planning and his designs and his presentations. And it was satisfactory and it's okay. But uh, he discovered uh, when he was assigned the task of uh, onboarding new engineers into the organization, that he enjoyed working one-on-one -on -one with people and bringing them forward a lot better than he liked his everyday job. And that was a revelation for Mike. And um, so as time had it, a friend of his asked him to begin moonlighting with him in the evenings uh, to uh, present um, management training um, seminars. And Mike enjoyed that so well that he wound up switching careers. So what's the, uh, what's the end uh, takeaway from this story? Is that Mike learned that his interests and his values, his personal things, the things that drove him and really made him excited, uh, those were necessary in his job mix. Those were his passions. So in this module, we're going to show you how to discover the whole mix. Earlier, we described your third step in the planning process is aptitude. And aptitude is discovering your best qualities, or another way is how you're wired. A great way to do that is with assessments, and there are three types of assessments. Self-assessment, asking others, and professional online assessment instruments. And in the end, you'll want to put them all together to see the common themes. So what's the point of conducting these assessments? When you compile the results, your strengths, your abilities, your passions, and best career pursuits will be much easier for you to identify. And here's something you may not have considered. Your assessment results can be interesting talking points when you're interviewing, allowing you to more confidently assert yourself. The first type of aptitude discovery, and that was step three, uh, is the CAR model, the CAR model. And this is one of the most important tools in your job search and your career search, and one that will be repeated in all of our workshops. So uh, this type of self-assessment um, is where you consider where were you a standout? Where were you a standout, a, a really peak performer in uh, your most recent job or really any position that you've held? And those three portions of the model are what challenges did you face when you were a standout? Not every day, but when you were a standout. What actions did you take to meet those challenges? And then what results did you achieve? Uh, what uh, what uh, really good uh, uh, end came from you successfully meeting those challenges and taking the right actions? So working through these three CAR questions, C-A-R questions, will be the foundation for your resume and will become critical uh, talking points in every interview. The second type of aptitude discovery is the ask others assessment. Ideally, you should ask three to 10 people who know you well about your accomplishments, your abilities, your interests, your personality, your values, your weaknesses, and suggested career niches for you. Uh, the one question that may be very difficult to ask concerns your blind spots or your stumbling blocks. And those are things that may be holding you back from your best performance when not addressed. Okay, so remember that you are asking people who are in your inner circle with this type of assessment, not people who are just casual acquaintances, but people who know you well. So when you're finished, how does their collective input compare with how you see yourself? Employers will see you in ways similar to how your valued respondents are seeing you. This process resembles a 360 degree profile that's used by some organizations. So some cautions that we have for you about asking others. 
First, ask each person separately and not in groups. And the reason for that is that you'll want to compare, compare the input later, one with another. And don't set these people up for just what you want them to say to you, what you want to hear. And third, don't ask your mom. <laughs> your mom will think you're pretty terrific in just about everything you do, so avoid that. Okay, there are three online tools that we highly recommend if you're wanting an excellent composite in the quickest possible way. There's a lot of tools out there, but these are three that we highly recommend that will get you there. Strengths, personality, and career choice are the focus of these three. For the second two, the DISC and the Holland assessment, uh, you'll find several of those versions that are online, but the very thorough ones are costly and streamlined versions that we recommend are free. So we'll show you the website addresses for each of them. Uh, website addresses for these and other assessment tools are shown on the handout for helpful resources that you'll find posted on the willowcreek.needsmed.org site that you're on right now. So we have a list of resources on there. You will find helpful internet resources as part of that list of documents. The first assessment tool that we mentioned is Strengths Finder. That's maybe hard to say, but it's very valuable to use. The highly regarded Gallup Research Organization that formed this tool came up with some astounding statistics after many years of surveying really millions of American workers. And they found that people who do have the opportunity to focus on their strengths and use their talents are six times as likely to be engaged in their job. What does that mean to be fully engaged in their job? It means that they're fully communicative. Um, they're giving information. They are receiving information. They are a full participant. They're highly communicative. And those same people are three times as likely to have an excellent quality of life. Quality of life. And you hear that phrase a lot these days. And um, uh, after all, we don't, uh, we don't uh, live uh, so that we can work, but rather we work so we can live. So does that give you incentive to discover and also affirm your key strengths and things that set you apart? So since about 1997, millions have benefited from that tool called the Strengths Finder. And what we show on this slide is a graphic of the end result of one of our team members. Uh, the top five themes or strengths for this particular person are highlighted in the darker shade of blue. And of course, there is a very thorough explanation within the tool of how each one will be vitally important on the job and in life as a whole. Um, notice that the web address for this tool is shown at the top. There's a, here's a picture of the output for the personality profile uh, called DISC uh, using the uh, famous continuum. Uh, D uh, in the DISC assessment stands for dominance or also known as directness. The I stands for influence. The S stands for steadiness and the C stands for compliance or conscientiousness. So in the graphic that you see, uh, the pie chart represents the relative dynamics among the four personality styles when using our recommended source. And that, again, uh, the address is shown at the top of the slide. So in this case, steadiness, that's the, the red portion of the, of the pie diagram. Um, uh, steadiness uh, is the most prominent personality trait for the person who took this particular tool. Everyone, you should know, is a blend of all four DISC personality profile styles or types, and usually one, two, or sometimes even three priorities stand out with a particular DISC personality. But there's no perfect or ideal style, since each person has a unique behavioral profile, different personality styles and priorities are everywhere around us. Well, here's a view of the third highly recommended assessment tool. And this slide this is not an eye test, but we wanted to show you the various steps and a sample um, outcome, the sample of the outcome 
uh, on this particular slide. The gold star shows the end result of our sample. Now, I know you can't really read this, but um, uh, bear with me for just a moment. The Helen code has been in continuous use since the 1970s and is one of the most reliable assessment tools for providing clues for optimal career choices. And it's universally used by students or recent graduates, transitioning professionals, those re-entering the workplace after a gain in employment, virtually everyone. And it goes by another name as well. The same principles are used uh, in a tool called Strong Interest Inventory. Again, the web address is at the top. Okay, so where, where we put the gold star is the end result of this tool. And it's showing the most likely uh, career niches uh, for you to, uh, to do extremely well in a career choice. That may not be the only choice, and they offer several opportunities or several different avenues, uh, but this will be a really good head start if you're not sure which career niche, which career path is perfect for you. So, and very important, after using this or a similar career assessment, we strongly recommend that you then refer to details for careers on the Department of Labor's website, and that site is www onetonline.com and you're going to hear a lot more about this in part two of the module. Well here's a very comprehensive graphic tool that was not included on the earlier group of three but it is a very good one. Career Direct is a robust tool that will analyze skills, interests, personality, and values. It includes an action plan that's linked to that ONET occupational data that we just mentioned, uh, allow you to zero in on specific career paths that you may be best suited for. It will describe the occupational outlook, the skills required, and the education needed. So it's not cheap. Uh, the cost of Career Direct is $25 for the mini version or $80 for the full treatment. But ask yourself this, how much are you willing to invest in yourself to land in a career that really suits you? So we have some advice on using assessments, no matter which assessment that you use. Stay totally honest with your responses. So answer the questions as you see yourself right now, not as how you wish to be or hope that one day you'll become, but how you are right now. So stay totally honest. Second, form a composite to look for what the common themes are, what things come up over and over again. And if a large amount of time has passed since you conducted any one of these assessments, whether it's the DISC or Strengths Finders um, or Holland or whatever it is, if a large amount of time has passed, do that assessment again because things will change over time. So, okay, as we finish up, I want to encourage you to take full advantage of the many resources that are provided through our dedicated website, willowcreek.needsmat.org, site that you're on right now, viewing these slides. Okay, and recommendations that we have for you is that you definitely create a job seeker profile uh, to uh, initiate communications. Uh, uh, also, we strongly suggest that on the same Job Connection site uh, that you use the daily devotionals and daily prayer requests, uh, that you view the job postings from local businesses, and that you review the links to the many documents on the uh, right, side of, uh, uh, right side of the site, and including the one that I just mentioned, Helpful Internet Sites. Uh, we highly recommend that you sign up for virtual one-on-one -on -one job counseling if you feel that that would be an advantage for you. And uh, also that you open additional links to PowerPoint overviews of our various workshops. So right now, take a few minutes, possibly review what you've learned by going back through the slides, and then continue with part two of this module. Thank you.